In this video tutorial, I want to walk you through some of the listing setting options for your Premium Press theme. So let's get started. To begin with, log into the admin area of your WordPress website. We click on Premium Press and the options we're going to be using today are called Listing Settings. Now this may be renamed differently depending upon the Premium Press theme you're using. For example, if you're using the dating theme, this might be called Profile Settings. If you're using the Auction theme, it might be called Auction Settings, etc, etc. The options here will be pretty similar, there'll just be additional options depending upon the core theme you're using. So let me give you a quick overview. We have global settings, which apply to all of the listings um, on your website. We have add edit listings, which reply directly to the, uh, the process of adding listings. We have media, which refers to the images and videos are uploaded. And we have a listing expiry options, which um, tells the system what to do when a listing has expired. So let's start at the top. Firstly, we have the option to enable and disable listings. So basically, if you're not allowing users to add content to your website, then just turn this off. For the most part, most users using our themes will now want this to be turned on. So we will go ahead and turn this on. So if I look at my website before, you see we have no buttons to add uh, businesses to my directory website. If I go ahead and save the changes and give it a refresh, you'll now see that the add but add business option is now enabled. So users can go ahead and create a new business and add it to my website. The next option is admin only mode, which basically tells um, the system that you're adding content to the website. So you're allowing business to be added, but only the admin is going to be adding content. This is great for the auction theme. So obviously if you want users to be able to bid and manage bids, etc. Um, but you as the admin want to add only the listings. So if you're only adding auctions yourself as the admin, then just make sure this option's on. So it's only used if you are deciding to add content yourself as the website owner. If you want to allow users to add content as well, then just disable this and leave it off. The next option, how many, it's quite self-explanatory. How many listings do you want a user to be able to create? Now, for example, on a dating website, you probably only want users to create one profile. So you'll only set this to only one. On other um, websites, such as the auction directory, etc., you might want users to be able to create multiple listings. So this is the option to um, enable it here. And then obviously once a user creates a listing, should the admin approve it? And we have a yes and no option. For most of the time, um, you want to turn this on or off depending upon the business model you're using. And if you set it to yes, then it will just be displayed as pending approval in the admin area. And then obviously you can manually approve that. And if you set it to no, then the listing will go live straight away. The next options we have, we have this pricing tables and this layer options. Now I'll explain that in a moment because it's quite a big section, but let's just skip down slightly and sort out the um, other options. Now these are the fields and the options that apply directly when a user is creating a listing. So if I select any plan, we have the options here and these are the ones that are displayed in the admin. So the basic option, would a user, is a user required to upload an image? So we can turn that on and off, which will force the user to add an image during the um, creation process. We have the minimum description length, which refers to this section here. And as you can see, there's a, um, a countdown here. So if I do testing, you can see that the, the counter is going down when I add content. And we have what we call custom fields. Now custom fields are quite uh, an in-depth option. We'll create a separate video on creating these, but basically you can add your own custom fields that the user would then be able to complete during the process. So as you can see, we have a phone number and website, and we have a phone number and website, and these are draggable and redroppable, so you can change the content. When we add a new field, we can go ahead and, and completely customize it. So I'll just give you a quick example. Testing, one, two, three. If I just save the changes, so we now have a new, new field here, testing one, two, three. If I go to my website and give it a refresh. Okay, we have this field here called testing one, two, three. So basically it's a very quick tutorial, but please follow the other main tutorial on creating custom fields. But basically you can obviously add your own custom fields that users enter during the listing and creation process. Now we have media settings. Now obviously image crop, which means it will crop all of the image now the um, basic concept for image cropping is that the system will automatically create crop images on the fly, but not all hosting plans support this. We have hide featured image, which means it will hide the first image in the gallery. 
So for example, if the user is um, adding lots of images and the first image is their um, featured image, but you don't want that featured image to be displayed on the actual profile page or the listing page, then obviously you can turn that off here. For most people, leaving this off is probably the best option. The next section, obviously videos, and this is where you can choose the type of videos that users can upload. So when we come to um, add videos, if we scroll to the bottom, you see here we have um, my videos, which is the users uploaded themselves. We have a YouTube options for users to actually select and enter their own YouTube uh, videos and the same with Vimble as well. And obviously you can turn these on and off uh, depending upon your website. Autoplay is quite explanatory. Obviously if you want the video to automatically start when the page is loaded. And finally we have a fallback image. And that refers to the default images that are displayed when no other image is found. So usually like a no photo or um, an image, a blank image. Um, is displayed and obviously you can customize that and set your own here and finally listing expiry again we have another video on listing expiry options but basically you're telling the system what to do once a listing has expired or if you have set up any expiry options you have the user to repay again or you can automatically delete the listing so it's a very quick overview of the um, the options let's take a quick look at the pricing table options so we can click on pricing table or we can click on page layout. So we'll start with the pricing table. We click pricing table and obviously now we can create and manage our packages. And it's worth noting from the same page, we have a drop link on the left hand side. So under packages here, we can just click on the same option and it's the same option as clicking pricing tables here. So with packages, we can create up to 10 packages. And if I show you again what that looks like, if I just go back to um, add listing page, so again, this is the pricing plan setup we currently have. So as you can see, we have free, featured, and sponsored. We can add up to 10 different pricing plans. So as you can have it free, featured, and sponsored. To edit any of these, simply click on it, and you have a drop down and lots of different options to customize. So if I just show you very quickly to change the name, one, two, three, refresh. And you'll see now the actual option here, the pricing name is here, free, one, two, three. We have featured and sponsored. And obviously all of these can be completely customized. Now, again, if you don't like the design of this pricing table, we have another video tutorial that explains how to customize and change to a different pricing table setup. So obviously check that out if you want to learn how to change the, um, the table design. But for the moment, let me show you some of the options in, in the actual packages. So obviously if you want the package on, make sure it's on. So as you can see, if I click on any of these, I can turn them off. So I can turn that one off as well. So I could, now I could just have three. Click save settings, give it a refresh. You'll see now I just have the one package. And within each package, we have a number of different options. So if again, if I click on the package and show the options, we can change the icon. Now, not all icons are used in different uh, plans. As this icon here refers to the one here. So obviously I can click on it and we can click and select any of the icons we want. And obviously when we refresh and save the changes, refresh the page, you can see obviously the icon has changed. So we have the icon option, obviously you can change the name and the highlight options. Now highlighted basically means if there's a row of three and you want that one to be selected, then obviously that will be highlighted. I turn it on and quickly show you. So highlighted obviously in a different color. So this is now red. That would obviously stand out in a row of three. Now we have a description. So obviously if you want to add your own description, you can do. Now, obviously some of these display options will be uh, used slightly different depending on the design you have for your uh, pricing table setup. We have custom features. So as you can see, we have this, my custom text, my custom, my custom text. You can click on my custom features and add your own text. So we might say, for example, um, includes 10 free images, um, includes um, free access, testing one two three okay so it's just it's just give you a very quick example save the changes refresh the page so as you can see we have our custom text here so let's go ahead and re-enable some of these packages again okay and i'll turn on featured one to be highlighted just to give you an example of that one again give a refresh Okay, so we have our feature on. Obviously, we haven't created any custom text for this. So let's just go ahead and custom text for featured. So let's just set my own text here. Okay, 
Okay. Same custom features again. Just make it equal. And then finally again, custom display features and add my own text here. Okay, so let's click save settings just to give it a preview. Okay, so obviously we have the red one, which is the featured one, which is one we selected as highlighted. And we have our own custom text. We have our own pricing and obviously the icons. And again, if we scroll on a bit more, we can see the pricing options. So we have 15. Now this is the price the user will pay when they go ahead and purchase and pay for the package. Now, obviously, if you have any package add-ons, that will be extra, but this will be the base price for this option. And we have a recurring payment. Now, if the payment gateway you're using supports recurring payment, uh, such as PayPal and Stripe, etc., then the user will be set up with a recurring payment, which will be automatically taken from the bank every month. Now, it's worth noting you should make sure you've turned this on before um, setting up your packages if you want recurring payments. Because if a user creates a listing without recurring payments, you can't set up a recurring payment six months down the line. They would have to go ahead and create a new package or purchase again. So again, we can scroll down and finally we have a number of what we call package features. Now this allows you to bundle in different options with the packages. So for example, you can set how many images each one can set. Uh, we can choose the option to allow users to upload a video, to display featured, sponsored, the homepage, etc., and how long the actual package lasts for. Now the duration basically means how long the package is gonna be on your website before it's expired. Now, for some people, we obviously don't want packages to ever expire. So if you're having a directory, you don't want the listings to ever be despi uh, to expire. So we can turn that to zero and that will uh, set it to, to never expire. Or if you want the package to be removed after 30 days, then obviously set the uh, 30, 30 days. And that way it will re it'll come off after 30 days. Now, obviously, if a user has a recurring payment, the listing will keep renewing itself. And obviously, then the package will continually going until they cancel their uh, subscription but uh, otherwise the, the listing will expire during um, after the number of days you've set here. And obviously we, you can allow you to select multiple categories. So we have some additional package features um, under the package options. So, okay, let's go ahead and save the changes. Now it's also worth noting if you want to um, disable packages. So for example, on the setting options, you want users to add listings, but you do not want users to select a package. So you want all listings to be free. Uh, all you got to do is turn off the packages. So you just turn off all the packages. Okay, and then we go ahead and save the changes. Now when I go to add a package, it's gonna skip the package option and allow the user to go directly to add content to my, to my website. Okay, so if we just quickly look at the listing promotions, now listing promotions are basically um, additional payments the user can pay to promote the listing. So obviously turn these on if you want them. So if I just turn these on to show you, click save settings. On the right hand side of my, uh, my listing page, you'll now see this option for the user to select and make uh, their listing stand out. So some people decide that they don't want listing packages at all, so they turn off all the listing packages, but they want listing promotions, which is actually a very popular way at the moment for people to set up packages. So you allow users to create free content on your website, but then if they want to um, improve it, improve the visibility on your website and make it stand out more, then they actually charge for the actual um, feature options. So we have three options. We have a featured listing, a sponsored listing, and a home page. And obviously those are quite self-explanatory. The featured would be then um, displayed in the search results. So if I just look at the search results, let's go search by grid. Okay, so if it's got featured, it will have a highlight. So if we do business 19, for example, if I just go to my listing options, okay, and it's just edit listing and business 19. As the admin, obviously we can add on these automatically. So if I just do it featured first, okay, I've got the page refresh. Okay, so the featured option, you can see it has a featured ribbon. So that's how it's displayed in the search results. Okay, if we turn on the feature, as you can see, it's now active. If you want the sponsor to be included, let's give it a refresh. Now the sponsored listing is always displayed at the top of all the search results. So they have their own section. So obviously that's quite a visual um, section for it to be displayed. That's quite a visual part. So if people are paying for that, then obviously um, you might want to charge a bit extra. Okay, and so that's now active. And if we hand it on the home page, click save changes, then obviously if you have any um, content and set up on your home page, then it'll be displayed on my home page as well. So that's a quick overview of what the listing package options are. Obviously you can set your own prices and turn on and off the ones you want. 
The main um, option here is the home page option. And obviously this will be displayed slightly different upon the design you've chosen. So we have another video that shows you how to set up your home page to display any featured home page elements. So do check out that video if you're unsure how to put featured uh, content onto your home page. Um, and finally, if we go back to the listing settings, okay, so we've just viewed the uh, pricing tables. If we go to the page layout, now obviously this is about the design element, which is why it's a jump link. So if we click this link here, it's going to take us straight to the design options for page layouts. So this is the all the design options we currently have for the, the actual single page. And this refers to the actual listing page on your website. So you can see now we have this as the actual uh, directory listing page and we have a number of options here. So obviously the, um, the admin can go ahead and customize and change some of the design options. All of the current design options are here. We do add new designs for the listing page quite regularly. So obviously check out for updates for those. And there are a number of settings here that we'll go through in another video tutorial. But the basics of this video tutorial is the listing setups in the admin. So obviously we've gone through all of the settings now. Um, so you should have a basic understanding of some of the options to set up your listing page. Thanks for watching.